So we know the E field right outside of a conductor has to be perpendicular. Let's see if we can figure out what the magnitude is. So this is um, E just outside a charged conductor. Okay. So let's imagine we have some slightly curved conductor. Ultimately, since we're just calculating E, calculating e right at the surface, it doesn't have to actually be perfectly flat. Right? We did the infinite plane. We calculated E for all distances from the surface. Here, we're really just calculating the E right at the surface. And when you're right at the surface, everything looks like an infinite plane. This curvy stuff is really far away. Okay? So let's not worry too much about it being an infinite plane, but let's still make all of our symmetry arguments. So our uh, Gaussian surface, in this case, needs to take advantage of the fact that this charge, sigma, on this big curved surface is going to create an E field that always sticks up. Right? In the metal, it's going to not create any E field. Okay? But here, it's always going to point up. So that's the case where we want something with a flat surface with an A vector pointing up. So that's this uh, Gaussian cylinder. Or we could do the pillbox. But the cylinder is easier to draw. Okay? So there is the area that's actually inside the cylinder. Okay. Uh, the cylinder has a top and a bottom area of A, and the area in the metal surface is A. So let's uh, do Gauss's law. The integral of E dot dA around the curve is the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. And here we break it up into three parts again. The integral of the top of E dot dA plus the integral of the sides of E dot dA plus the integral of the bottom of E dot dA equals the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. Okay, well there's going to be some field sticking out the top. The A vector goes up. We know since we're treating this essentially as a plane, infinite plane, the E field sticks up. So, as we've argued many times, this is EA. The sides, we know, because the electrons would move, right? If there was a field this way, the electrons would move. So we know that there's no flux for the sides, is that if A vector is that way and E is that way, they're perpendicular to each other. So that's zero. And at the bottom, it's zero, because the E field inside a metal, the equilibrium is always zero. The charge enclosed is just sigma times the area, sigma A over, over epsilon naught. So in the end, you get that the E field of a charged metal does not depend on the area of your Gaussian cylinder. It's just that E equals uh, sigma over epsilon naught for a charged metal. And we kind of got away with ditching the plane, or the infinite aspect of the plane. And it was sort of a trick, and I'll make sure you see it. In the infinite plane, we calculated the E field in all of space. Okay? Here, we just want to know it right at the surface, and it's being forced to be perpendicular. We don't really rely on symmetry to make it perpendicular. It's actually the fact that we know the charges can move along the surface that always makes it perpendicular. So really, we could zoom in to where the Gaussian surface is a teeny little thing. And that actually takes care of most of our symmetry arguments that we need. So that's why I kind of drew this as a curved surface. It doesn't rely on it being an infinitely flat surface. It can be curved. And I see a question there, and I know what that question is. I know for sure. It's where is the two? Because that comes up every time. You get a formula for the metal that's different from the formula. Uh oh, computer breakdown. Whoa, OK, whoa. Luddite is quite unhappy, uh, so he's writing in really big font. Luddite, which is an interesting name for someone taking a MOOC, uh, says that the charged metal field right is different from the charged plane. Why do we get um, sigma over 2 epsilon naught for a charged plane and sigma over epsilon naught for a metal? And the reason is those are not the same thing. Okay? It is true that for both you have a surface that is a charge sigma. Okay? And when it's just literally a sheet of charge, there's no material involved. It's just a sheet of charge. It creates an E field both ways. 
But when it's a metal, when it's sitting on a metal or a conductor, it only creates an E field this way. Okay? So charge has a certain amount of oomph to create an E field. Okay? It can only create so much. There's so much, so much flux it can create. It creates a finite amount. So the same amount of charge is going to create a certain amount of E field. If it has to create it both sides, well, it makes half as much. Is, uh, uh, no, no. E is sigma over 2 epsilon naught. But if it only has to create it on one side, if it throws all of its charge making uh, excitement into one side, then it's just over epsilon naught. So it's physically two different situations. That's really the reason. They are not the same. Even though they are both a plane of charge, one is in free space, one is sitting over metal. That's the reason.